So I made this network data, flight data with accurate location and cities on earth just using this CSV file. So let's see how we can do this. Starting with let's open Blender, delete everything and we need a sphere because we want earth, our spherical earth. This video is not for the flat earth people. For now let's just right click and shade it smooth. So let's switch to the material preview by clicking this icon. Let's apply some earthly material on it. Let's just divide this panel from right here and we can switch to the shader editor. So by selecting our sphere, we can go to the materials tab, click on new. I will name this earth. I forgot the R. Okay. Now for the texture, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you all the texture. All the textures are from NASA. They own it. Um, they, I'm just using it for this tutorial just to teach you. So first of all, I will just use a image texture right here and I will click on this button to open the texture. Now I have already downloaded the texture that I wanted. So what we have to do is first of all, just select this earth color. So our earth can have some colors and connect it to the base color. And we have earth. Let's go to the Google and ask the diameter of our earth. So we can search for earth diameter and it will tell us that it is 12,756 km and that is too much big for blender. So I'm going to just copy the four initial the numbers and I'm going to use them as meters, not kilometer. That would be too much. Selecting our earth, pressing the N key will bring us this item panel. And here I will change the dimension to the value I just copied. And of course, remove that comma and enter. Now our earth is massive. It is not breaking blender right now because the real size would break the blender. So the next issue is that if you zoom out too much, our earth disappear. That is the issue due to the clipping. Right now, if we press N again, it will show us this panel again. And if we switch to the view and here we see the clipping start and end. The end is way too low now. We need to change this to 10,000 from 1000 and now we can zoom out properly. Now it's time to use that data on our earth. Don't worry if the earth doesn't look very great. I have all these blend file available on my Patreon, which have all the controls and all the features. So again, head back to the Google and here, what you have to search is, for example, I'm gonna search for US airport longitude and latitude. And here we have the first site and we can go inside it and we have all the data. What I want you guys to do is just copy all this data from here, go to an untitled sheet. You have easily access to the spreadsheet, which is using the Google Docs. And you can just paste the data. I have already pasted it right here. So you have to just do is press Control Shift V and it will paste all the data. The last thing you have to do is just make sure go to the files and go to download. And here you will get the option to export it as CSV. It is really important because a Blender can only read the CSV format. After we are done with that, we can head back to Blender. And here we have to switch this panel to Geometry Node Editor and click on this new icon and we are going to work here. So to bring in our data, we have a node called Import CSV. By the way, before going any further, I would like to inform you that you have to use Blender version 4.5. So to download the 4.5, which is an alpha version, search for Blender, go to the downloads. And here you won't be able to see the download option. You will have to go to the daily build section right here. And here you will get the option to download the 4.5 now here so we have to select the file that we have saved as csv and that should be in my downloads and i will select the file to see what we have we can connect this to the output for now what data does this import csv contain so let's just split this panel from here and if we change this to the spreadsheet and here in the points you will be able to see the latitude and the longitude but you don't see the name of that particular airport the reason is that right now Blender cannot read the strings, which is the text value. So we will just have to manage with this. So we are going to join it back in to our earth so that we can see our earth and the points as well. But there are no points right now because they are not given their proper position. To give them their proper position, we are going to use a set position. And here we are going to use named attribute. With this named attribute, we can fetch these data if we just click on this we get a drop down and we select that particular attribute so i'll select the latitude and duplicate this and i'll select longitude now we can combine them using a combine xyz connecting the latitude to the x and longitude to the y and if you connect this back into the position um we see nothing so right now the points on our geometry are like way too big right now we can use a vector math node just after combine xyz and change this to scale now I'm going to set the scale to very low like 0.01 for now and you can see they are 
here but the first problem right here is that they are on just a flat surface but we want to have them in a, in a spherical shape so right now you have to focus very clearly because whatever values i'm gonna put right here is gonna make it into a spherical thing so the node that is gonna make it into a spherical thing is the most important node which is called rotate vector and using this we can achieve that so we initially we combine all this data to the rotation and then we just duplicate this named attribute and switch it to the longitude then we can just connect it back to the vector so right now again this is way too powerful we have to reduce it down using a math node and we can set it to divide so that we can scale it back in so i'm gonna set the value to one with five zeros something like that and then ahead of this i'm gonna use a add node which will be set to one i'm gonna explain it later then again using a combined xyz we are going to set it to z now we are missing one element that is we have to add a multiply node just in between right here and change this to one and a minus one and finally connect this back into the position and now you are seeing something spherical happening so let's see this without this viewer node we can delete that viewer node by the way i'm pressing ctrl shift left click to view this first of all you have to change this value to 0 0.0175 and then with this add value you can make it move outward or inward whatever you want it to be now the position of these airports or the data doesn't look right because these should be right here we can fix that using just a simple transform geometry node just after this we have to only change the value of the x and z so i'm gonna set, gonna set the x to minus 90 and same for the z to minus 90 and now you can see them at their perfect places and with this we can continue visualizing our data now as per the data i would like to select a particular airport and i don't want other airports so for that we can use a delete geometry node right here it's gonna delete everything but we don't want that so first of all we will need the index which will fetch us all the airports then you can use a integer node because our index is in integer and then after that we can use a compare node so what is going to happen here is we have to switch this to integer and we can connect this to the a value and b value will be our index so right now we will tell blender hey whatever value is here make sure that stays and that is not equal to that value everything else will be deleted and we can connect this to the selection as you can see there's a point available for us and that is the exact location if you go back to our spreadsheet that is the exact location of the Detroit if you search it on the Google Maps that is where our airport is so we can increase the number to select the next airport and so forth now we would need another airport so that we can create a path between them so let's just duplicate this whole thing right here and we can connect this back to the delete geometry and then you can connect it back in using this joint geometry right here now if we change the integer value we can get random airport so let's use this one for this tutorial now to create a path what we need to do is we don't need initially the second point connecting to the joint geometry we just needed it to so that we can fetch some data from it we will do just in a moment so right now we need something on this point which is a line so we can use an instance on point just connect a curve line as an instance and we have a line on it it's too big for now let's just reduce the size i would say and after that we can use set position to set the position of its endpoint to that particular airport so to fetch the position of that particular airport we can use geometry proximity which will give us the position of this point and what we can do is just connect this position to this position right here and of course we have to change this to the points and right now uh, we cannot see any kind of result because the first thing we have to do is make sure to realize the instance and after that we have to make sure that it is selecting only the end point of our curve so we can use end point selection node and connect it to the selection and make sure the start size is zero and you can see it is connecting from this point to that point how do we give it that kind of curve and that is going to be really easy as well so we are again going to use this set position node right here now using a position node right here we have to connect it offset by the offset so you know right the normal direction of the sphere would be something like this so that we can make an arch on our path so that would be really going to be easy we already have our sphere we just need to grab some data from it so before we can combine that data we would need 
a vector math node like this. To combine the data, we would need to fetch the normal of our earth, which we already have right here, which is this one. And we can connect this to a node which is called sample nearest surface. With this, we can fetch a normal. If we plug in a normal data like this into the value and change it to vector. And we just connect it to the vector right here. The first problem we have here right now is that you can see it is already going way beyond. We want the start point and the end point of the curve to stick to the airport's position. And that is achievable really easily just using a spline parameter node. We can connect this back in using a scale so that it won't affect that particular point. Now you can see it is sticking to the one airport but it is sticking, not sticking to the other. So to make that happen we can use a float curve like this and connect this factor to the value and connect it back to the scale. Now we just have to make the same arch that we are going to make on our curve so like shape it something like this. Now our curve is back to its original position but we don't see that arc. The re simple reason is that our curve has only two points one here and one here there's nothing in between it would need some points in between to form that kind of arc so for that what we can do is use a subdivide node which is subdivide curve and you can see something like this happening if i increase the number we have a very big arc and if you want to control it even further you can just duplicate the scale and we can reduce it like this as well i found this method really easy and it is better to control now, I would like to convert this line to a proper mesh using a curve to mesh node. Then, it would require a profile curve. For that, we are going to use a curve circle and connect it to the profile curve. So, right now, the curve is way too big. So, let's reduce down the resolution to 5 and also reduce down the radius to something 0.01. It still looks large, so we can change with the scale right here so that we can make it more thinner. Now that we have done that, you want an object to be moving on it so for the starters we are going to use a point and make it move on this line now we get the option to feed in the position of that curve inside this position so we can fetch that from the our original curve right here let's drag it out and we will then search for sample curve then this will give us the position and we can connect that position to our points position and then let's just connect it back the joint geometry and we can see that point it's way too big so let's just reduce down its size then we can just move it using this factor value right here as you can see it's moving on that particular curve let me show you a really nice trick to make it continuously move on that curve so we're going to use a scene time connect the seconds to the factor and you will see it moving continuously but it reaches a particular position where it cannot go any further or it cannot come back to its original position so to make it loop we can use a really simple node which is math node and we will change its change its function to fraction what will that do is make it loop also you might notice that is going way too fast so if you would like to reduce its speed what we can do is duplicate this fraction node change its function to divide and i am going to set the value to like something five so that it reduces down its speed a way more now we can replace this point with a plane. So I can go to this really nice add-on which is called Blender Kit. I can search for plane and click on this free filter. Let's use this paper airplane. Now to have it on that particular point, I use a node which is instance on point and we can bring in our paper plane from directly dragging here and we can connect this to the instance. But right now it's way too big. So I'm going to set it to relative first of all and then increase its scale like that. So right now the rotation doesn't match the line's direction we can rotate it of course using this like that and that and we can have that kind of rotation if you move it you can see it is not exactly following the direction of the curve all the time what we can do is using this tangent right here we can feed it inside the rotation it always align with the line so before we can plug it in we have to align this data to euler so that it can be properly use and connect it to rotation we have to switch this to the y as you can see it is working better than before what if we want to still rotate it like on the axis we can do that as well we can use a rotation value like this and connect it to the rotation and then you can change the z value as you can see it is rotating on the axis and you can see it is looking really good it's reaching that particular location i would want it to scale down and then completely disappear we can of course achieve that using the factor that we use which is a spline parameter right here we can just duplicate the whole thing 
and we can fetch this using connecting this to value right here and we can connect this to this scale and then we will have nothing right now because in between we need to use a vector math node and change this to scale now we can increase the size of our effect on the plane and now you can see it working just adjust around with this curve to get the desired result now for the last part what we can do is you obviously wanted a text on the start point and the end point right so that can be done easily as well we need to just go back here where we created the particular point so what we can do is we can drag this out the start point and connect an instance on point node and the instance we want here is a string to curve and if we connect this in we don't see anything right now because we have to enter a text value here i'll name it it will start and let's connect it back in using the joint geometry and right now we can see the start point which is way too big so we can just scale it down we have the ability to control the size here it's small now and we can also just rotate it using this like however you want it to look like and just use a fill curve node to fill the data and we have mesh on it so just select all this duplicate this move it down right here and then we'll connect this to the points and connect this back inside the geon geometry right here and we have that and i can just change it to end point and i can also just rotate it however i want now what if you would like to like want to collect this start point to the multiple airports you can do that as well the first thing that we have to do is get rid of this text for the start now next what we have to do here is get rid of this as well and we are going to use a random value node right here and changing this to boolean and connect it to the selection right here and you can see multiple connection happening if you change around with this probability you can decrease the number of connection and then change around with the seed as well you can change this as well to change the location of the main airport or the main connection it just looks like a moving spider now the next thing that we want is we only are seeing one plane there should be more multiple planes let's hack back where we created those planes and right now what we need to do is connect an index node in this sample curve so that it can fetch all the curves and still we see no more planes than that because we have to increase the number of points as well because the more points the more planes so it is 200 and we have more planes and they are going all in same direction if you want this result you can have it but you can randomize it even further with just one node so just after this divide duplicate this and I will change this to add and connect a random value node to it. Connect it right here. And you can see they are more randomized. Now, one more thing. If you would like to just have it like a data connection, we can have that as well. So let's just get rid of all of this stuff. I'll change this to data. And heading back here where we see the connection of the, our curve lines, we can use, set a material just after it. And we have to create another material for it. And I will name this a new material and name it data. Now head back to the shader editor. In the shader editor, we get into the principal BSDF, search for emission, and then search for a transparent BSDF. Connect them both using a mix shader and connect it back in. Now we can just use a noise texture like this and connect it right here. We have to increase the noise way too much for this. And check the normalize as well. So I'll set it to 500 and also to animate it, you can change it to 40 and then you get the option to animate it. I have all these blend files available on my Patreon with all the precise data. It has all the really nice controls and features. If you really want to get that, go grab it in my Click Join the membership of my Patreon and get all the access to my all the blend files link is in the description so don't forget to grab my blend file from my patreon and that will support me and my channel i'll put to you and if you really like this tutorial please give a thumbs up and if you have any doubts do drop them in the comment section if you have any feedback for my tutorials please do let me know so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one